Portswood Lake and Watershed Association has been doing water testing for several years. The purpose of this video is to try and give you an orientation to the equipment we use and how it is used. Basically, we do four tests when we are testing the lake. We look at depth, clarity, dissolved oxygen, and temperature. And I'll talk about each one of these separately. The first piece of the equipment we use is a Secchi disc. And the Secchi disc is used to measure the depth of the water and the clarity. The clarity tells you how much particulate matter is in the water and gives you an idea of how clean the water is. This is a black and white disc with a weight on the bottom. The line that's attached to this disc is measured out in feet and in meters. The red markings are feet, the black markings are meters. A meter is basically a little larger than three feet. To start the testing, we would lower this into the water until the weight hits the bottom of the lake. You can tell when that happens because you begin to get some slack in the line. When you feel that you've reached the bottom, you look at the cord and see where the water intersects the cord and take a reading. If it were at this spot, the water would be two feet deep. Naturally on the lake it's going to be much deeper than that. The big lake has a depth of about 12 meters. So we, we lower this to the bottom and find out the depth and then we record that on our chart. You begin then to slowly pull this up through the water and you will reach a point where you can see this black and white pattern on the disc. That tells you how deep in the water you have clear visibility. So you might want to move this up and down a little bit until you find that exact spot. And again, you look to see where the cord intersects the water. And that would be your Secchi disc reading. Secchi is spelled S-E-C-C-H-I. Strange name, but it works very simply. This is an illustration of the chart we use to record our measurements. This is a chart for the big lake. And we take measurements at three places, the north end, the south end, and the middle. So there are three double columns for those measurements. And if you notice at the top, the Secchi measurements are in feet. So the Secchi measurement for the north end of the lake for this particular measurement would have been five feet. In the middle of the lake, five and a half feet. And at the south end, five and a half. While we're looking at this chart, you'll notice that there's some information to be filled out at the top. The date, the air temperature outside, the ambient temperature, the weather conditions, clear, sunny, overcast, rainy, whatever, the time of day, the name of the people who are doing the collecting, and the organization, in this case, Swartzwood Yacht Club. Dissolved oxygen and temperature readings are made with a handheld digital readout instrument, a meter that I have in my hand. We have two of them. Dissolved oxygen tells us how much oxygen is actually dissolved in the water. We measure that in milligrams per liter. The temperature is measured in degrees Celsius. The combination of the dissolved oxygen and the temperature reading gives us an idea of trout habitat in the lake. The trout habitat tells us how healthy the lake is. If the lake can support trout, and particularly if the trout can reproduce in it, we have good quality of water. Before you use the meter, it's a good idea to, to familiarize yourself with it. It has a screen which reads out the digital information, an on and off switch, a light, an up and down arrow, a mode, and an enter. It also has a hole in the side which 
holds the probe. The probe is at the end of a long wire, which is weighted and which again is marked out in meters, so you can measure depth. It is powered by batteries, which are held in a chamber underneath it. The two meters are virtually the same, except for the probe. The probes are a little bit different. Before you use this instrument at the beginning of the season, it's a good idea to look at the membrane in the probe and to change it. If you will look at this membrane, you can see that there are air bubbles in it. If there are air bubbles in there, it will not operate properly. So we have to change that and we do that by taking off the guard. And when I unscrew the guard, you'll have a better view of the membrane itself. This one is from last year, so it needs replacing. Okay. The other instrument has a similar type probe, again with a guard that screws off, but the membrane replacement is different. This does not have a membrane on it at present. It's important that these ends of the probe be clean and that they not be touched with your bare hands. We use distilled water to wash them off. In order to replace the membrane, the technique is different on the two different machines. I'll show you the more difficult one first. The first thing I've done is wash this off with some distilled water. There is then a solution which we use to fill this. And so I will put, it, it's in a dropper bottle, I'll put a couple of drops in there until it is filled to the very top. And if you have a chemistry background, it has a meniscus, a curved top to it. The membrane is a piece of transparent, looks like plastic. I'm going to put that over there and hold it down and slip a rubber o-ring over the top without hopefully touching the top of the membrane. Hooray! I think we got it. <laughs> okay, so we have now have a new membrane on there with no air bubbles in it. We trim off the excess membrane which you can do with a pair of nail scissors or small scissors. And hopefully you won't have to do this. And then you put the guard back on and it just screws back on. And then you should be good for the season. When not in use, this can be stored in the hole in the side of the instrument. The newer machine is much, much simpler to change the membrane. You simply unscrew the old one and take it off. You get a new one and you put in about eight drops of the liquid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. You then simply screw it on, tap it to make sure you have no bubbles in there. Turn this upside down and screw it on.